Well, now that uh, now that we've got the uh, aileron uh, hinges uh, set up with the epoxy, they're in. They move freely. It's now time to uh, mount the servos. I went ahead and took a couple minutes, and uh, I had to extend the uh, leads on the uh, servo cable. Uh, so uh, I went ahead and cut that and added that in. And I told you originally we covered the wing and we went ahead and covered up the openings that we cut out for the servo bodies. Now's the time that you want to come back and cut it out just like this. We went ahead and cut this one out and we also cut out the channel up to the middle of the uh, wing area here and that's where we'll bury the cable and then we'll bring the, uh, the ends out and this is what will plug into uh, the receiver to run the ailerons. So what I'll do is I'll go in, I'll cut this channel out, we'll go ahead and mount this servo in, bury the cable, and then we'll plug it in and we'll make sure everything works. I went ahead and cut the opening out and I cut the channel for the uh, servo lead. <coughs> and we're going to just mount it in there for now and bury the cable. We don't want to worry uh, right now about um, gluing it in because we want to test it make sure everything works properly. But the channel that you cut, it's just a matter of taking your, uh, taking your lead, pushing it down in that groove, and uh, if you buy uh, if you buy if you buy servos, you know try and get the longer. Uh, this is a, a six inch. You'd need at least a nine or a twelve inch to get the uh, to get the lead back to the center. But it's not that big of a deal to um, to solder in some. Just make sure you know uh, red, black, and signal uh, before you uh, before you put the shrink tube on there. That's kind of frustrating after you've gotten it all done and figured out that uh, you didn't do it right. But go ahead and press your cable down in the hole, down in the channel there. And once that's done, we'll go ahead and plug it in, test it to make sure everything works properly. And you don't have to worry too much about what this looks like because when we're uh, done mounting and gluing in the uh, servo, we're going to go back with uh, a piece of white um, covering and we're going to cover from the servo arm all the way back to where the servo lead comes out of the wing in the fuselage. So this will all be covered up and you, you'll never even know that it's there. The only thing you're going to see sticking out of the wing is going to be the, the servo arm linkage to the aileron. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, plug everything in and I'll uh, come back and we'll give it a quick test. Okay, I went ahead and plugged it in. Got the uh, transmitter turned on. Let's turn on the receiver. Servos come to life. And let's just do a quick test. They both seem to uh, move freely. They're not binding on the uh, foam at all. That's good. Now that that's tested, you know everything's working properly. Now you can go back in and uh, you can either use like a white silicon uh, sealant or white latex or you can use epoxy. The problem with epoxy is if you uh, crash, break a wing and or let's say a servo goes bad, you strip a gear and you have to pull these out, uh, you could rip a big chunk of foam out with it then you're, then you're going to have to fill that all in. Uh, it just depends on what you're comfortable with. Uh, in the past, I've used epoxy and it seems to work fine. I've never had to uh, remove these servos, but never say never. So after we get these glued in, then I'll come in and I'll cut a, a piece of film that'll cover these up. And I also have uh, another thing I do where the uh, servo leads exit the wing. I have little staples that I epoxy in uh, where these come out. So that way, uh, if you yank on these real hard, or if you get in a crash and for some reason it, the wing comes from the fuselage, uh, you won't rip these leads out and you won't rip the film. It'll, uh, it'll stop right here. So I'll go ahead and uh, glue these in, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I cover these up. Well, I went ahead and uh, I glued the servos in with 5-minute epoxy. I know that seems extreme to a lot of people. Um, 
Like I said, I've never had a problem with them. Uh, if you're concerned, use silicon caulking, uh, sealant, or uh, latex will work just fine. If you cut your holes tight enough, it shouldn't be an issue. I, uh, I like using epoxy because uh, your alons take uh, a lot of abuse, not in the air, but as in transport, they get banged around real easily. And uh, the, I, I think the, uh, the latex uh, caulking uh, could pull away from the uh, material, and I'd hate to lose a plane in flight because of that. Then I went ahead and pushed in the uh, staples, and what I use are just, um, these are finished staples uh, for a pneumatic gun, and then I just take and uh, I cut them down to oh, about half, three quarters of an inch, like so. And then I take and coat them in epoxy and push them into the foam and that will lock your uh, lock your leads in place so those won't go anywhere. Now now that that's done I'm going to go back and I'm going to take a piece of film and I'm going to cut it out like an L and it will cover this part of the uh, servo body and then a piece that will go back and it will stop right at the uh, right at the staple and then your servos will be complete. Next thing we'll do is uh, we'll uh, measure from the uh, servo arm down to the aileron and mark to put our horns in and then uh, we'll build the linkage to our uh, to our to link our uh, aileron to our servo. Alright I went ahead and uh, took a couple minutes to cut out my uh, piece of film that I'm going to use to cover <clears throat> the uh, servo body and the leads back to the fuselage. Now it's just a matter of uh, taking the, the film and uh, lining it up. I want the uh, servo body to be completely covered up with just the servo arm sticking out and the leads to run. I, I want to center my uh, film where I ran the leads down. And then once you get that into place and, and where you like it, then take your uh, iron and tack it and work your way from the center out to the servo body and you'll want to work around these corners uh, around the, the servo opening and once that's down then you go back and go over the uh, the center area and that'll uh, stretch that material but if you go to the center area first and you bunch it up then it's going to be all wrinkly so you want to work around the edges with your uh, iron then once you get that sealed down then put the iron over top of it and it'll stretch it taut. And when you're done, this will look, uh, it'll be a nice complete unit. And uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll uh, start working on the horns. Well, we got the uh, pieces of film in place. I just wanted to give you a quick look as to what it looks like. Everything's in place. Leads are out. The uh, servo arms are out. Uh, it's a nice, clean installation and uh, up in the air you can't even see it. Next we'll do, measure for our horns for the ailerons.